Gin is Britain's favourite spirit. We bought over 47 million bottles of it in 2017. Distillation goes back to the 9th century when Arabian alchemists developed the Alembic still. This produced highly alcoholic spirits which could be infused with various herbs and spices and which were, at first, seen strictly as medicine. When distilling spread to Europe, it was through the usual havens for medical knowledge, religious houses. By 1269, Dutch monks were producing a special juniper-based spirit said to cure the plague. This was the birth of what we now call gin. Spirits at that time were drunk by the rich, and after the dissolution of the monasteries in Britain, they were often produced at home. Demand was high, for who knew medicine could taste so good? By the 17th century, spirits, or cordials as they were known, were increasingly commercialised, no longer just as medicines, but as pleasant, and it was claimed, healthy tipples. Meanwhile, British soldiers were fighting alongside the Dutch as they battled for independence. The shot of Dutch courage their forces downed before heading off to do or die became popular with the Brits too, and returning soldiers brought back with them a taste for this curious juniper-flavoured drink. It may have started off as a Dutch drink, but it quickly became very British. It was no longer a rich person's drink. It was now a cheap and tasty way to get hazy and forget the daily struggle for people whose lives were often short, brutal and very miserable. Distilling was easy and could be done in a basement while the rats looked on. It was especially popular in London and it was there that it would cause the most problems. In 1688, King William III saw an opportunity to tax gin, making money to fight the French. He encouraged production and the gin craze went bang. For nearly 75 years, gin was blamed for murder and mayhem, and when the government finally tried to control it, there were public lynchings of officials trying to inspect distilleries. In the 19th century, gin was rehabilitated, although it never lost its slight air of danger. Working-class gin palaces dripping with glass and glitz made gin glamorous, harking back to the time when spirits were only for the rich and making it slightly more socially respectable. It was often drunk neat or with hot water. But a new era was beginning. Tonic water has its origins in South America, where the bark of the cinchona tree was used to treat malaria. As a powder, it was mixed with water and sugar, and it spread across the British Empire. But it was only in the 18th century when carbonated water was invented that it made the leap from fairly vile medicine to everyday drink. It still lacked something, though, and it was in the heat of the British colonies such as those in India that people started adding gin for an extra kick. Gin and tonic was born. Today, gin is as popular as ever. In 2009, laws were changed to allow small-scale distilleries to produce gin more easily. All the reasons it was popular in the past are just as valid today. It's easy to produce, endlessly buried, and mixes well with other drinks. No wonder we get through so much of the stuff. Cheers. <laughs>